Welcome to the uh, Franchise Secrets Podcast. Eric Van Horn here, and today is just a topical podcast around selling your franchise. And I wanted to um, just share some of my real experience in this. I've done this, gosh, over six different brands, I think. And in those brands, a number of them had um, a dozen or more uh, locations in them. So a lot of what I talk about is from experience and then that validated with people that I respect and people that I know that are in franchising uh, that actually um, are doing the same or have a lot of knowledge in it. So this is not just uh, my own experience, but it's my experience plus um, dealing with a lot of other people in and out of franchising. So, um, if you bear with me, as I look at some of the things, what I was doing, I was taking notes while I was working out because a lot of times when you work out, you are able to think a lot because you don't have technology around. I have a whiteboard in my, uh, in my home gym and I uh, write a lot of things down on topics like this so I can share them with you. So a lot of, a lot of people are asking about valuation and how do you value your brand. And sometimes uh, I'm in the Facebook group right now looking and there's a conversation going back and forth about val uh, valuation. And one of my friends who is in, in uh, he's actually basically was kind of my coach a, a long time ago and helped me when I was new in business. He posted in there, um, do some uh, industries have better valuations than others? Uh, you know, if yes, why? And he said he's been told in the past, like, you know, a business should be worth 1.2 times revenue. And then another business franchise that he's in says, that, you know, should be around uh, three times profit um, or EBITDA is a typical way that a lot of businesses are evaluated when it's around profit. And he said, who's correct? He said the three times profit after taxes is a horrible number. Why would anyone sell unless they were desperate? So um, here's my thought on just, let's not talk about industries, but let's just talk about um, how you structure your business from the beginning to set yourself up to get a higher multiple. By the way, anything that I say in this podcast is just my opinion. It's, this is not gospel. So take this validated against other really smart people that you know and and ask them, and then even better than talking to really smart people, talk to people that have actually done it and sold it in your industry, because that's where you'll probably get the the, the best um, advice. And whatever brand that is, let's say you are in a service brand or a retail brand or a fitness brand or beauty brand, and and in there there might be a lot of different um, uh, valuation methods and what people are actually getting for their business when they sell it based on the actual industry and the brand itself. But I'm going to give you some basic stuff. Number one, when you are working in the business, the business is built around you, then you are probably going to have a lower multiple on that business. And when I say multiple, that means like, let's say you are making, we'll just for easy numbers, we can either say a hundred dollars in EBITDA which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's a, it's a common way that businesses are valued. So it's, it's basically cash flow um, in, in some way. And if you are valuing that business at a four times multiple and it's making you know $100,000 a year, that business would sell. If it's a 4X multiple that, that they're typically selling for, you would get four hundred thousand dollars as a you know a typical sales price for that. Now, if you if EBITDA was four x and it was making a hundred thousand dollars, let me let me back up. If EBITDA was a hundred thousand dollars and you were working in that business, and the new owner had to join uh, to learn from you and do the business themselves, well, that business is not as valuable to the greater marketplace. Because a lot of people that when they want to buy a business, they want to buy something that's up and going. They don't have to put you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week into that business. So um, 
So they don't want that. So one, they probably wouldn't even look at a business like that, a, a larger private equity group or just any type of, of business owner that wants to buy cash flow and buy a business that's up and running. So one, you start to eliminate the, the amount of buyers that you have if you are active in the business because now they're going to have to be active in the business. And if they're not active in the business and they're going to probably have to pay someone a hundred thousand dollars to run that business. And that means that business would be worth zero in terms of cash flow. So the business of four X times zero is zero. And so it's really not worth a whole lot to the person that is buying a business for cash flow. And that is a typical entrepreneur. That's what I do. I want to buy businesses that cash flow. Um, so that's another, so that is something to really consider. Now you might be in your business today and you are the person that's doing everything and you are focused on increasing that revenue number and revenue is the most important thing to you because if you're thinking the higher the revenue number, if I can get in 1.2 times the revenue number that I'm going to be making more money. Well, I don't know that that's always the best way to do it. I would look at revenue at last, not first. Um, look at cash flow next. And the most important thing is like, how active are you in the business? Because if you, if the owners involved, let's say one hour a week and the business is making a hundred thousand dollars a year, well, that's worth a lot more than if the owner had to be involved 20 hours a week. And so just something to think about. Now, if you are that person that is in the business, you're grinding it out and you are, you may or may not be thinking about selling that business, but you should be looking at removing yourself from the, from the day-to-day -day operations of that business or doing everything within that business, because you, if you don't do that, your business is not going to be worth as much. And you're just going to, and you're not going to be able to grow and diversify and scale the way that, that a typical entrepreneur really wants to. At least you're not going to be able to buy yourself back time because you're working all the time. So start to do the things today so you can start to remove yourself from the business. And it's really scary, uh, you know, at first. A lot of people are like, well, I have to pay someone to do this. I have to, you know, I'm not going to be able to make that much money. And put a value on your time. If you don't have a value on what your time is worth, then your time is worth what, what you would pay somebody else to do. And I saw myself doing a lot of uh, task work that I could easily pay someone $25 or $35 an hour to do for me. I, so I'm buying back my time. My time's worth way more than that. And your time may or may not be worth way more than that. There was a, there was a, a point in, in my life where, you know, my time was worth hardly anything, but I could still get people to do things for me where their time was worth less than, than my time was. And so I was buying back time and I was allowing them to do things for me. So that's a, probably the first thing. And uh, Cameron Harold, I've had him on the podcast before um, and I've spent some time with him. He wrote um, a number of books, um, Meeting Suck and Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs and with Hal Elrod. And he's just a brilliant guy. And he said, um, you know, we look at removing ourselves from the business. Probably the first thing that you need to do is hire an executive assistant because if you um, don't have an executive assistant, that means you are the executive assistant. If you don't have a cleaning crew, then you are the cleaning crew. If you don't have someone that can run the cash register, then you're the cash register person. I don't even know that's you know a term, but that is really at the end of the day, you need to look in the mirror and, and, and call out what you're doing because that's really your role in the business. And can you hire somebody to do some of that stuff? And start taking baby steps with it, you know, to start taking it out chunk, chunk at a time and delegating different things to different people and empower them. I think the other thing along with this is you need to have people that you can truly empower. Um, and when I think of empowering somebody, it means they have the ability to, to make decisions. Not that you've given them the authority, but they have the ability to make decisions. And that's what I like to hire. Um, in my businesses are people that can make decisions. Um, example of that today, I was on a couple podcasts uh, recording them and interviewing people. And I had it, it, a new in business for me. We spent a lot of money on it. And we had someone um, that was another franchisee that was going to give us a lot of really good information. I mean, really good, relevant information that was needle moving, 
uh, information that we were going to immediately uh, put in practice in our business. And I wasn't able to be on the call because I was recording a podcast. And I have two incredible uh, team members and they're not my owners. They're not, you know, the, the, the owner with me. They are team members and they have that owner mentality. And they, uh, I said, we need to have a call with so-and-so and we need to learn this. And that's all I said. And it was all done. And I just followed up with a text afterwards and said, how'd it go? And then they tell me how it went and what they're doing and how they're implementing it. And that's the kind of person that I like to hire because they can take that business and run with it. And then you need to look at that person and, and, uh, and help them um, empower them because they want that empowerment, but you need to help them grow and give them avenues for growth. And I think the other thing, just like in, in business partnerships, what I look for are people that are uh, doers. They can, they will, they'll get out there and they will do the stuff that needs to get done. Um, and they are trustworthy. So trustworthy, full of integrity. Um, you don't have to wonder about them. Are they really doing this? Are they really doing that? They can make decisions on their own time. You don't have to monitor the time and, and all of that stuff. So trust, being trustworthy is really high on the priority, uh, priority list for me in employees and uh, business, um, business partners as well. So, gosh, I've talked a lot about um, that first piece of of uh, of uh, business uh, valuation, and let me get into, and that's all to do with getting yourself out of the business. Because if you are the crux of that business, if you are the unicorn that is why the business is as valuable as it is and you remove yourself from the business, the business is not going to um, continue to do what it's done historically. And if the business doesn't do what it's done historically, then the price goes down. Um, so we, we dove much more into um, the management piece of it than I was initially expecting to, but um, this is something that everybody uh, can learn. And, and no matter what business you're in, even if it's a business where you're typically buying yourself a job, pull yourself out of that and start hiring, hiring people so you can um, just be more strategic. And, and, and you think about it, if you are able to pull yourself out, think strategically, uh, not do the grind and the hustle because you do that in the beginning. But if that's what your business model is, is you grinding it out, you hustling, you put it in more hours than anybody else. At some point, something's got to give. And that's not the reason any of us got into business, uh, into business in the beginning. So um, I'm going to uh, just come back with more, questions, um, answering more questions around business valuation, but I thought this would be an interesting one um, um, about uh, the people. And we'll just leave this as a standalone. Um, and I'm going to come back and we will do uh, some more um, questions, uh, answering some more questions around selling your franchise. By the way, if you are interested in diversifying or buying your next brand or maybe buying your first brand, uh, just reach out to me, go to franchisesecrets.com and, and you can uh, reach out to me there and I'd love to get on the phone and um, see how I could help you.